Assalamu alaikum and I welcome you all again in another video dear students. So uh, like I said that uh, now we will discuss the discourse markers and what are they in, in our very final video for the conjunction and connective series. Okay. Though it's not going to be the part of your examination, but as I told you, as you, my students, I want and I, I'm expecting from you that you should be having this information when you're going to go in your senior grades as well. And uh, it's really important for you to be able to distinguish between the conjunctions, connectives, as well as the discourse markers. So without further ado, let's get started. So uh, I'm going to read this definition out for you. All right. And let's try to understand this together as well. OK, so. Now, discourse markers are words or phrases used in English uh, to signal the organization and flow of spoken and written language. Now, this line actually means that it signals the organization. Organization means that the patron, okay? Now, for example, if you take an example of creative writing, okay, maybe it's persuasive writing, news article writing, magazine writing, creative writing, um, we have paragraph writing, okay? So, what happens that to make sure that the flow of the language that you're using, uh, and, uh, it's pretty, let's say, uh, in a very smooth way, things are connected with each other. And in English grammar, we use the word uh, coherence. So I can only say a teacher can only consider your paragraph, your creative writing, depending on whatever writing you have done. I can only consider that coherent when your sentences are going to be connected together. and. Uh, Discourse markers can really help you in that as well, along with the conjunctions as well as the connectives. So that's what it means. So uh, I'm going to start from here. So they helped. They help the listener to. Uh, they help the listener or reader to understand the structure and the meaning of discourse, and to follow the speaker's writer's train uh, of thought. Now this I can understand. It might be a little bit hard language for you to understand, but let me just make it easier for you. Again, it's discussing about, you know, discussing about the discourse means the flow, the fluidity, uh, the flow of your entire writing. For example, for example, if you're writing an essay on uh, the climate change, OK, or maybe the weather conditions of Pakistan, OK, or maybe the flood in Pakistan. So your your let's say your introduction paragraph, introductory paragraph, your body paragraphs and then your conclusion, they all should be written in a way that one is connected with another and it looks like that it is a series going in a sequence. OK, it's like a series or a sequence of paragraphs that are well sorted, well brainstormed and uh, written by you in such a way that they all are connected in a uh, sequential way from ascending to descending. OK, uh, for example, if I take an example of a climate change paragraph, Oh, uh, sorry, an essay. So first, I'm going to be giving the introduction that what is a climate change, how it's affecting the world. And then in the first paragraph, maybe I'm going to discuss about a country which is most affected by it. Maybe then in the second paragraph, I'm going to discuss about the cold areas around the world which are being affected by it. So see, a sequence is coming over. And then in the conclusion, I'm going to discuss that uh, what is the overall impact and uh, how maybe I want to suggest something as well. And while doing that, how we're going to be using discourse markers, let's find out. So discourse markers can be divided into several categories, including now here are the categories additive markers. Now, additive markers, these are discourse markers that add information or ideas to what has been said or written. For example, um, we can include also in addition, furthermore or moreover. Now, these words we can use in sentences if we want to add more information. Now, for example, for example, I love playing sports. Furthermore, I think it's a great way to stay healthy and fit fit or uh, now the second one is adversative markers now adversary um, or adverse adverse effects means opposite effects or something opposite okay something contract or something contrary uh, for example uh, these discourse markers uh, these discourse markers that indicate contrast or opposition opposition between ideas for for example uh, here are some examples but however nevertheless on the other hand, OK, and this is how I'm going to use them in the examples. For example, I really want to go to the party tonight, but I have to finish my homework first. OK, so see, uh, it's kind of like it's also kind of let's say I can say uh, putting a condition as well at the same time. Then we have casual markers. Now, what are casual markers? These are discourse markers that show cause and effect. OK, uh, Causal, uh, uh, yes, causal, sorry, not casual. Sorry, I take my words back. I mispronounced it. It's causal markers. Uh, these are discourse markers that uh, show a 
cause and effect relationship between ideas. For example, they include because, since, as a result, of, or as a result, and therefore. So we have also we have discussed this thing in the previous video as well. So a little bit more to more for you. Now, example: I didn't study for the test, so I didn't do as well. So I'm I'm using like so over here, but you can let's say you know change that depending on the context of the sentence. You can uh, use these uh, causal markers the way you like it. Okay. So and see, it's not only to train you to be able to write you know, in beautiful English, using very good grammar, this is all part of the grammar, but also, Beta, I want you to practice them in your everyday spoken English. See, until or unless, if you're not going to practice it, you're not going to be able to remember these words, okay? You're not going to be able to actually understand that how these words are actually used in our everyday life, okay? Then we are having temporal markers. Now, what are they? These are the discourse markers that indicate time, relationship between time, relationship between ideas. For example, firstly, secondly, meanwhile, and finally. See, this is something that shows a sequence. For example, first, we need to gather all the information. Then we can start working on the project. See, I'm actually telling a, a person in a way that uh, a, a person can get idea that, okay, in what sequence the things are needed to be done, needed to be done. Or maybe let's say some, I'm telling a story to someone that uh, yesterday night I went with my parents uh, to watch a movie at cinema. For example, if I have to share that with my classmate, so I can, like, you know, I'm gonna tell him or her like a story. Uh, for example, I'm gonna start saying that, that, oh, firstly, uh, we went to the uh, cinema counter, we bought our tickets, and then we bought the popcorns. And then, firstly, and then, that's how we can use them, okay? 